Snow has been a part of video games since video games have been a part of Earth, because snow has been a part of Earth since the Earth has been snowy, and Earth has been a part of video games since people from places with snow on Earth started making games. What game does snow best? What game did snow first? Do all games do snow the same? We're not actually gonna answer any of these questions directly in this video, but I can promise you that we are going to look at approximately 25 years of video game snow, starting all the way back in 1966, 1996, sorry, starting all the way back in 1996, the year you were born. Let's take a look at some snow. It's time to Hello, welcome to Mario 64. All the way back in 1996, maybe one of the first three-dimensional representations of snow in a video game. This is a pretty uh, straightforward snow illusion, really. Um, the snowflakes sort of move with Mario so they don't react with perfect depths. You can see if I go like this, the way that they sort of move in a circle along with me. But it is very clever how they do have, even though it's probably just one layer on the front of the screen, like a 2D layer, they do have bigger and smaller ones that fall at different uh, speeds to give the illusion of a sort of depth, right? But there aren't any instances where you're gonna see any of these snowflakes actually going behind anything. So if you look at the tree, no matter how small or big the snowflakes are, no matter how far away they might be, they're all gonna pass in front of everything on the screen. There's no actual 3D depth to them. It's just a clever 2D trick. Wait, those snowflakes are going behind the fence, aren't they? Yeah, there, it looks like some of those snowflakes are going behind the fence. Wait. Okay, so interestingly, there is a, a certain amount of depth. If you put something really close to the screen, some of the snow will go behind it. Yeah, you can see it disappear behind the tree as we walk closer. So that gives you a sense of sort of how close that snow layer actually is to the screen. In terms of feeling like snow, oh god. The actual snow on the ground uh, pretty much does not. The only reaction in any way that you can get from the snow that is, that is in any way snow-like is this, uh, but you have to fall from a pretty high height. So it ends up feeling like quite dense snow. You know, my feet are not going into it. There's no footprints. The other snow level in Mario 64 uses uh, much the same snow effect, and it similarly retains a sort of crude hard snow sort of feeling. Mario 64's snow is hard, no doubt. You do have the slightest, it looks like, hint of snow on this um, fence texture. So that's a nice little touch, just a teeny tiny bit. But again, it's not overly convincing as sort of like some sort of weather phenomenon. It does feel uh, exceptionally firm. This level does have an iconic cold wind sound. Uh, which you can hear in this little valley. Again, it's not exactly as convincing as something like Skyrim's Wind or Red Dead Redemption's, but goodness gracious, there was about 15 years between even the closest to those two. And certainly Mario 64 um, either established or popularized or whatever. I don't know what the first game was that did it, but a lot of the things that Mario 64 used to create the impression of snow, for example, different footstep sounds, little things falling off of your feet to represent the snow you're running through, and a sort of layer of snowflakes falling um, are all tropes that nature uses to convince us that we are in snow. Uh, and therefore also all tropes that uh, video game developers use to convince us that we are in snow as well. But certainly, as time has gone on, things have only gotten uh, fancier and more advanced. And there's nothing wrong with that. For sort of GameCube era representation in this little discussion, we're going with Twilight Princess. The GameCube era uh, realized something very important about snow, and that's when you step in it, your sink, your sink feet, your feet sink. This is a very minor improvement because obviously there's no actual sort of depth to the texture. They just raised uh, the texture above where the feet sit. But I think it helps get the point across really quite nicely, especially when you have these moments where you sort of step on these kind of slippery, slidey uh, parts where your feet don't sink. That really uh, communicates to you that, hey, this is like ice with a little snow on top whereas this is properly snow. And much like Mario 64, there is a sort of particle effect around the feet, just this time slightly more uh, advanced. It's not until you come to the bottom of the mountain that you actually get low enough that it starts snowing, which that's a nice little touch, right? Uh, but the snow down here is pretty simple. And it kind of just looks like a bunch of bouncing white balls uh, up close, to be honest. There is not a lot of uh, snow added to the texture work which kind of gives the place the impression that it doesn't actually snow all that much and it's just really 
cold as hell. And we haven't talked about it much and we won't talk about it much as we go through the rest of this video, but it is cool how different... Stop texting me. It is cool how different games use different sort of types of music to evoke different feelings in snowy environments. And it kind of seems like there's basically two. You're either doing like desolate, cold as hell frostbite music, which is sort of what this is doing, or you're doing Christmas time effectively. Twilight Princess makes me feel cold, not snowy. Because there's not a lot of wet, you know? Twilight Princess is like Siberia. It's just like dry and cold, and it doesn't even snow that much, but it's so cold that the snow doesn't melt. And you know, that's important too. There's all sorts of different types of snow in the world, and there's all sorts of types of snow in video games. That's And that's what I'm here to show you. I've never loved Minecraft's snow. But I've also never really looked at it, I suppose. And there is something cool about how pervasive and sort of dynamic it is in that it, uh, you know, it, it depends on what the world is, where the snow falls. You know what I'm saying? So it has a pretty unique impression of snow. I like that snow is just sort of constantly falling from the sides of trees in Minecraft. That's nice. But of course, all of this is the, the Minecraft snow when it's not actually actively snowing. That is something that it is paramount that we see in order to judge uh, Minecraft's use of snow appropriately. So I'm just gonna sit here and wait and hope that it starts snowing at some point soon. Hope that I don't die in the meantime. Oh, heck yeah. Interestingly, now that it's started snowing, you'll notice the trees have all turned white. That's a fun touch. And as the snow falls on the ground, even though they don't individually sort of hit the ground, over time, the fact that it's snowing is actually filling out all of the spaces that were previously, uh, that had previously become green again. And also as it's snowing again, you can see a second layer of snow building up on the ground. Now it does look like there's only two types of snowflakes in Minecraft, right? There's the little cross guys and then the little x guys oh and look there's also a little square okay maybe three now the most amazing thing about minecraft when it's snowing is looking up at the sky this is crazy business seeing all these snowflakes in one spot and the fact that they're all physical objects means that they start small and get bigger so it has this huge sense of depth that some other games struggle with when you uh when you're dealing with snow it really does feel like tons of snow falling down on you onto the ground you know so yeah i'm gonna go ahead and say i was underrating it i mean look at this this is astonishing I was I was definitely came come at Minecraft I came at Minecraft snow a little too hard from the get go. This is uh, this is really something, really really pretty. I think for a lot of people, Animal Crossing is winter time. I don't know why that is because I'm pretty sure the last couple of these came out in like the middle of March. Actually, I do know why that is. It's because Animal Crossing does a really good job of representing the winter vibe. Take a look at, at what's happening with this here early season, uh, December 8th snowfall. You, you'll notice something very cool. And if you're from a place with snow, you'll be familiar with this. When it snows, but it's a little too warm, the snow tends to melt right when it hits the ground. Watching this happen, I have to wonder, the pacing of the melting of this snowflake feels so authentic to watching a snow, a piece of snow melt on a semi-warm fall day that I have to wonder if somebody at Nintendo was tasked with looking up videos or going out into the world and timing and animating this snowflakes fade uh, in perfect pace with some sort of real snowflake because you'll notice it's not just a fade it doesn't just disappear sort of linearly it appears on the ground suddenly hangs around for a moment starts to fade and then fades very quickly on the end which is very much how i recall that happening as a kid now unfortunately with animal crossing this is all trickery because the snowflakes that are falling from the sky are not the ones that hit the ground and melt. Watch a snowflake in the sky, track it down to the ground. It simply disappears. But this little representation of snow isn't really uh, what we think of when we think of snow in Animal Crossing. No, when we think of snow in Animal Crossing, we think of this. Proper wintertime season in Animal Crossing. Snow is perpetually on the ground and in the trees, and Animal Crossing gets to show off perhaps its greatest contribution to uh, video game snow pantheon, which is this. What a sound that is. Another thing Animal Crossing is good about with snow is gathering snow in places that it would gather when it was uh, sort of brushed or shoveled away 
from your place of business. So you've got snow in the corners of those steps and up against the edges, snow gathered on the tops of fence ledges, and in a very amusing sort of confession that these trees are in fact uh, just layers of plastic, snow gathers in three perfect layers uh, on the pine trees. But the entire time, Animal Crossing's quaint understanding and relationship with snow and its emotional impact is underlined by that one most important statement, Animal Crossing understands how snow sounds. You certainly can't deny Skyrim's snowy beauty. I don't know if there's ever been a game that more thoroughly embodied the idea of like a chilly Arctic North. And you do have to respect a game whose entire continent is committed to maintaining the integrity of that um, climate aesthetic. Um, you do get snowflakes in Skyrim, and we're, I'm gonna hope that we can find us a little snowstorm that we can get into because it does snow quite a bit sometimes. But one thing Skyrim does with snow that a lot of other games do not is what you see right here. Blowing snow drifts. This is something that a lot of games miss with snow. You know, everyone knows snow as twinkle, twinkle, fall from the sky. Oh, every snowflake is different, just like you. But when wind and snow come together, you do get this. These sorts of wispy, snowy, cold things that when they hit you in the face, they make you feel like you need to go back inside and not come out till spring. Uh, in terms of snowflakes, Skyrim does a great job of remembering that snowflakes are not things that fall from the sky. Snowflakes are tiny pieces of snow that simply react to their environment. So they can go up, down, and side to side. They go with the wind. So you can see the chaos of the snowflakes we see above us. In a lot of games, snow just falls. It doesn't blow. Skyrim remembers that snow blows. One of the only places in Skyrim that is at least pretty close to perpetually snowing uh, is the area around the city of Winterhold. And this gives us a really excellent representation of what I was saying with how Skyrim handles Snow and wind. Oh my god, there's a dragon. Oh, Christ almighty. This is... I'm trying to look at the snow, for God's sake. So yeah, you can see in the way that the, the, it's such a multi-layered representation of snow. This isn't just like a clear single pattern going one direction, right? You've got snowflakes going left to right and side to side and swirling and moving. The main thing to consider with Skyrim's sort of snow philosophy is Skyrim understands that snow blows and a lot of games do not. Look at this. Doesn't get more triple A than this. If you ever wondered what it would look like in a game if somebody gave you one million dollars for budget to make the snow uh, realistic and detailed, uh, this is pretty much what Red Dead Redemption 2 did with every single part of the game. But maybe the most impressive thing about the snow in this game is just how dynamic it is. If I sprint full force into this tree, boom, the snow gets knocked off it. Most games uh, have some sort of, they pay sort of lip service to the idea that you leave footprints where you go, right? But at a certain point, you leave too many footprints and the game fills up and it can't, it can't hold all that information. But Red Dead Redemption 2 doesn't fill up. It's so um, excessive in its use of the hardware that every footstep uh, you take, every roll, every gunshot, uh, every dead body that falls in leaves an imprint on the snow that the game uh, remembers. The only shame is that I can't lay down and make a snow angel. I can crouch down. I can make a snow hole. That's a whole different, that's a whole different uh, activity. That's what me and my friends used to do. We'd go outside and make snow holes, but it's for a different reason. We'll talk about that some other time. Also, here's a little known, uh, underappreciated bit of sort of snow detail that I'm just noticing now. Look at the way that they capture the sort of shimmering icy sheen of some uh, snow that's been sitting on the ground, some freshly laid snow sheening in the moonlight. And you'll notice down here, it doesn't shine because the moonlight doesn't hit down here, right? Movies don't have to deal with that because if you point a camera at something that's shiny, it just will shine because physics. But you make a game, you do sort of have to build the physics of it. So emulating real um, physics is kind of like, it's kind of a crazy thing to try to do. Again, talking about just the um, the sense of snow over a large scale, uh, this game does a really good job of representing the sort of snowy fade into the distance out there by the trees. 
And the snowfall effect itself also, I would say, pretty subtle on the order of snow effects. It lacks a bit of the overwhelming three-dimensionality of a game like Minecraft's snow, but the overall ambient effect is very strong, which is kind of the whole point. And when you put all of these things that we've talked about together, you know, snow sort of being reactive and remembering where you've walked, and kind of the ambient sort of occlusive effect on uh, distance and, and soft lighting, Red Dead Redemption 2 really does a pretty incredible job at making you feel the hindrance of snow and the cold of snow and really puts you in the place of snow. No doubt this game has the most AAA of all snow that's ever been had. And it's easy to be cynical about that, but I quite like it. I like that somebody was given this much money to go so crazy. These six games that we just talked about certainly don't represent the complete breadth of snow in video games and, and don't even represent the complete, complete but don't even represent the complete breadth of snow in 3D video games, but I'm sure that you are perfectly capable of commenting some game that you have that represents snow for you. If you did enjoy this video, please leave a comment down below saying you enjoyed it. That helps me know that I'm making videos that you want to see. And as usual, the best thing you can do to help me out is to immediately watch another one of my videos after this one. And I only have one more thing to say to you in my free time. I make a lot of music. I use that music in all of my videos, including this one. So please today, enjoy the song. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. See you later. Happy holidays. Kwanzaa or whatever. Hanukkah. Christmas? We're in a single picture. Oh.